All right, let me uh, let me think back here. Um, Suicide Cult was uh, pretty much in line with uh, the work we did with If Ever Beauty Fails. Uh, the two demos kind of serve as a, a bookend of sorts, I guess. Um, the two demos that feature the, uh, the, the, the four-person lineup. Um, uh, the thing I remember most about that is, is again, uh, Suicide Cult was the shortest of, of the Save Your Sect releases. Um, we called it a promo and, and, and not even a demo. Um, basically featuring the final three songs uh, that were written uh, under that four-person lineup. Um, done identically to uh, to If Ever Beauty Fails, done uh, with a reel-to-reel -reel player. Uh, rehearsal set up again, um, recording, uh, I believe at the time we, we, we did both demos, uh, we had nine songs that we were practicing regularly and I think it was more or less, well the first six will comprise one demo and the uh, uh, last three will be a shorter promo tape. Um, I kind of remember having, having dual ideas, um, I think there was, uh, some method to the madness of dividing the nine songs and, and not just having one demo with nine songs. I had these two ideas going on in my mind, uh, the first of which was If Ever Beauty Fails, which we've already discussed, uh, the second was the suicide cult idea, uh, it was doing some sketch work as as uh, we did with If Ever Beauty Fails. Uh, we had originally the uh, uh, the Anastasia sketch, and then uh, did one of of, of Jesus uh, uh, holding his head in his hands, sort of deal. Uh, the whole suicide cult thing was kind of along the lines of you know the kind of like oh, oh not another one, okay. Uh, you know, kind of capitalizing a bit on um, the Jim Jones thing when I was a kid, remembered that one, and then uh, later there was the Heaven's Gate cult uh, with Marshall Applewhite and the whole Comet deal, and uh, just a, a history of these uh, religious cults that uh, were supposedly, uh, quote, uh, Christian, I guess, in nature, and, and just kind of, again, the following of, of false gospels. Uh, back then, I, I, I may not have been uh, so in touch with the uh, whole idea of, 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 the, uh, of the false gospel thing, um, but uh, as much as I am aware of it today, but uh, subconsciously, maybe a kind of a undercurrent uh, perhaps in myself that um, had uh, uh, allowed that to leak through into the the idea of, of the suicide suicide cult demo um, uh, suicide cult uh, at three songs long uh, in in retrospect uh, it's it's definitely lamentable that uh, we had or or, or mainly on Dexter's part to to not include the uh, White Virgin, Black Virgin song because uh, at four songs it, it would have, I believe, been more complete. I really believe this that song in itself uh, would have been worthwhile to throw in the demo. Um, I think it would have fit well in with this particular demo. Uh, however, uh, not to be back then, I kind of, I kind of remember, uh, uh, not really wanting to rock the boat per se. Uh, I really felt I had a good thing going. I had, uh, you know, the again the dark uh, uh, girl singer up front with Anastasia. I was really happy with her image. Was really happy with with her performance. Uh, 
would improve over time. I uh, was really amazed to find uh, a guitar player who could very much, uh, was was very much in the vein of, of the whole John McGeoch, Susie and the Banshees thing, really understood that and, and was able to to actually perform those pieces. So uh, there was give and take in those days. I, I, I Perhaps if I would have pushed the issue a little harder. Um, but uh, again, uh, in those days, I was pushing the issue harder um, practice-wise. All right, so uh, I could be a bit of a, uh, uh, I got a bit bitchy at times with, with uh, with practicing uh, with Apostle Void and, and, and with G.O.D., uh, very, again, very uh, regimented, very rigid, uh, practiced all the time uh, with those bands. Uh, me and Dave practiced quite a bit, but uh, these other guys were, the, the others were uh, perhaps the most relaxed about practicing that I had encountered up until till this point. Uh, very loose, again, Anastasia's uh, distance from the practice place made that a little more understandable uh, but again uh, there wasn't quite the dedication perhaps or the focus as I remember and that would lead to me getting kind of uh, a little irate at times trying to get these guys together to practice um, uh, but I guess the practice was enough because uh, we did we did in, in, in retrospect again. The hindsight being 2020, we, we got these rehearsal tapes together and, and uh, really happy with their performances. Perhaps it was that maybe Dexter didn't need to practice, but I did, and I felt that Dave and I really, perhaps being uh, you know weaker links in the chain or less experience um, with uh, with things, uh, maybe you know was a slight bit of feeling inferior or insecurity on my behalf at that point in time. Um, again, looming over my head, there was always uh, doubts about the songs I was writing to. I didn't have full confidence in putting together a song on bass. And uh, um, again, maybe that was part of it, crept into it, could be. Uh, but in any case, um, uh, Suicide Cult, the three songs on there, uh, pretty good stuff, actually. I mean, I was, I was kind of happy with, you know, felt that those three songs, particularly at the time, really were, were some of the best uh, that I had written up until that point and the best that the band had played. Uh, and... Uh, Maybe looking back and, and, and now, I mean, I'm kind of suicide cult that that little piece, you know, little little chip of little diamond chip in the the midst of of uh, what would come later for for us, but it still sits there, kind of as a uh, you know a bridging gap between the four person lineup and and what would later be a duo of of Anna Stage and myself, which would last for our next few demos um the uh kind of a swan song of sorts too again uh the demo itself uh, uh very much the same looking handled very much the same as we did if ever beauty fails uh kind of glued a black and white xeroxed handwritten savior sect suicide cult uh hand-drawn picture uh, the back this time did have the song titles, perhaps uh, somewhere along the line I was uh, hit with that inner uh, revelation that perhaps it's a good idea to put the titles to the songs so that people might, you know, be attracted to a song title and, and maybe see if the the music actually, the lyrics actually fit the, the song title. Uh, never. Again, the, the, if ever beauty fails, uh, it was negligent on that aspect of it. Uh, but this one again, I, I think, was more uh, towards geared towards booking because again, uh, we did not have uh, much of a following at this point, if any, uh, us outside a, a very small circle of our friends who got these demos along with you know club owners. And uh, but Suicide Cult uh, uh, 
would be again a a, uh, a swan song of sorts. Um, uh, everything culminated in in uh, in Anastasia getting us a show. Um, uh, she uh, uh, would frequent a uh, 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 rock club uh, up Moscow, PA area, and uh, the uh, uh, I recall us practicing for the show, and I got unbelievably sick. Uh, I came down uh, before the show with the most unreal fever uh, or uh, viral attack uh, I ever had in my entire existence. Uh, I remember being bedridden, sweating profusely, uh, not being able to sleep, having fever dreams and nightmares and, and uh, incoherency. And I just remember the bed being drenched and, and whatever punched me at that particular time in, 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 uh, in uh, uh, winter of 94 uh, really put me down for the count. And uh, I remember uh, uh, distinctly laying in bed, unable to move, cold sweats, and uh, the show had to be canceled because I was, you know, this was, you know, not something that was just a 24-hour thing. This was a lasting deal for uh, for a little while. And, and I remember distinctly Anastasia calling me and just matter-of-factly saying, you know, I had a dream that you died. And I'm laying here half coherent, like, well, I mean, but, you know, kind of news is that that's the last thing that I wanted to hear but it was kind of this eerie overtone that I recall from those days and the, the cancellation of the first savior sex show which when I recovered was promptly rescheduled and, and I didn't die and and everything went uh, went uh, ahead with the show and and, and uh, times at this point had been been rather tough. I I uh, remember we we got out of my parents' basement and we were rehearsing in a space at a drum shop, and we were sharing that with another band. And and uh, I don't know. It kind of took a certain charm out of things, a sense of of home base type thing, and, and all of us would converge in a neighboring town and, and there was a drive to get there and now we had rent on our hands and and, and I don't know it, it somehow didn't seem the same there seemed to be a, an air of, of depression that kind of hung over things at that time but um, I remember going on vacation sometime around there I, I don't know why I was I was it, it was I was going on vacation to go visit, to visit Omen from Apostle Void in Florida. I remember that, and I was gone for a week. And, and, and during that period, I was gone. There must have been some conspiring going on uh, against me at that point, um, because when I came back, uh, we proceeded with the show early in '95, uh, early January of '95. Uh, but something was going on, and uh, I, I was cornered uh, in the parking lot uh, by Dexter, saying that uh, him and Dave were departing the band, and they were going to form, reform Dexter's old band. And uh, so uh, my suspicions of something undercurrent being dark, undercurrent being wrong. Um, so they told me before the show that they were uh, leaving Savior Six and going off together. And uh, and with that, uh, I kind of remember uh, Dexter putting forth a really miserable performance the entire show, just kind of hitting random notes and uh, being self-destructive and trying maybe purposely to sabotage a show. I have no idea. Both of us were drinking quite a bit, so very... Uh, 
very likely could have been that, among other things that uh, he may have been doing. Um, and the whole thing was videotaped, which was, you know, nowadays watching it, I, I find it to be, you know, maybe not have it any other way, perhaps. But, uh, you know, it was very not reflective of the brilliant playing that he did both on If Ever Beauty Fails and on Suicide Cult. So, uh, and such wrapped up the four-man lineup with, uh, uh, with Dave and Dexter traveling their ways and leaving me and Anastasia in kind of this ambiguous gray area, you know, of, of not knowing what was going to transpire after this. So, and that becomes another story. Uh, but again, a suicide cult marking the end of, of an era, um, but, but a good end of the era. Again, uh, uh, things looking back or, or things put into a retrospective, it becomes uh, that much more interesting to look back on all these little uh, uh, goings-ons and, and the things that make things, make things interesting. And uh, so what we'll do, We'll take a little break at this point, and I'm going to come back and we'll discuss the three songs that appear on Savior Sex Suicide Cult promo. <laughs> 